Hi, Roberta. How are you? I'm very well. Thank you for asking, Julia. Welcome to the show. Yes, um, thank you. We're, we're being told that it's too early to book holidays. Is that is that still fair advice? Uh, no, it's not. I, I don't agree with that. So I think it, you know it's, it's absolutely too early to travel. We're not allowed to travel. Clearly, that's illegal. Um, but for many different reasons, consumers want to book and they want to have something in the diaries for whether it's holiday or visiting friends and family. And there are perfectly some, some very, very um, flexible options with money back guarantees for any consumers looking to book. Uh, what's really important is they've got to be very careful of what they're booking and who they book with. So booking through, you know, travel agents who are reputable, who they trust um, and that they're booking a package. So when you're booking a package, um, you do have at all protection and there are some very flexible options. But a lot of the airline partners also offering money back guarantees in the events of changes, um, enforced changes by the government. Julia, the government has to be cautious, clearly, because while our vaccination programme is going very well here, and we see we seem to be at the tail end of the pandemic, God willing, in other parts of the world, perhaps then they're, they're not quite as advanced as we are. So they, they have to be cautious because they can ill afford another lockdown, of course. So, I mean, where should people start looking or planning to go on holiday? Um, I think that's a really good question, isn't it? And I I think we're all working with really, you know, very little information at the minute. And and it's very uncertain for all of us in the industry because clearly we rely on government advice to to make the right plans and put the right measures in place. In the next week, we're told, or within this week, we're told we're going to have more information around the traffic light system and more clarity around um, potentially what countries are in there, although that might be a bit too early given we won't be able to travel until the 17th away. So um, I think that you know, the best advice that, that I would have is, is for anyone looking to book, speak to a trusted travel agent and make sure they get in the flexible booking conditions. And there are they are in abundance. There are many of those out there. Um, check the terms and conditions and just make sure that in the event of changes that they're able to cancel with a full money back guarantee. There are there are different conversations at different levels of this because it's a very like everything else at the moment, Julia. It's a very complex situation mm-hmm. we're all facing. But one of the suggestions is that unless we get this right as a country, as a society, what will happen to holidays? Certainly in the immediate future, is it, it will only be the preserve of the super wealthy because you know if they're being, if they're asked to pay two hundred pounds extra for a test on the way in and the way out, they can afford that. That's not a problem for the average family. An extra eight hundred pounds is a problem. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, as an industry, we're not used to selling just to those that can afford. I mean, travel has opened up horizons for many and and there are many, there's always been for many years now, we've all enjoyed affordable options for every type of customer. Um, So one of the things that, I mean, Johan from EasyJet, I mean, you quoted him before and, and a lot of our airline partners have been very open with today is around the ability for government to look at lateral flow testing, which are which is a much more easy, accessible and affordable option for customers travelling to and from green list countries. Um, and that's something we welcome. It's been used mass, for mass testing at schools, care home residents clearly using that. Um, so and, and there's more and more research that's coming through in terms of the efficacy of them. Um, so that's something that could be a real option. And and I, I did hear the Prime Minister talking this afternoon. He was interviewed the, this afternoon um, and talking about affordable and flexible and looking at lots and looking at the different options available to ensure that travel is affordable. Um, and ultimately, when we sit down and start to slowly reemerge and look at travel, do, does does the travel industry as a whole need a financial package, Julia? Because in terms of employment, is it, it was is a huge employer. So many people rely on their 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 living on the industry, but it's been decimated. Oh God, yes, it really has been. I mean, my members, I you know, my my membership has um, independent travel agents that are selling leisure and business travel. They're currently operating at twenty percent of their twenty nineteen levels, um, and that's bearing in mind for twelve months now they've had no income. So you know, the industry is really looking forward to welcoming customers, to booking customers' holidays and travel plans. But they are in a really difficult place, and. And the industry employs a million people. There are a million people in the UK that are reliant on the travel industry for, for their source of income. Um, so, and, and, you know, there's a lot of talk about staycations. And again, the industry are, are supportive of, of helping Brits holiday in the UK. And there are great options. But, but it's, it's also um, doesn't help our cities. You know, if you look at our cities, they rely on incoming tourists and they rely on international visitors. So 
the staycation message is one that we will we will work with customers on and we will clearly support because it gives everyone a different option um, but it won't save the economy and it certainly won't save the summer so it's certainly something that you know we need to embrace the travel industry we are an enabler um, and it needs to it needs the recognition that it isn't a it isn't a financially difficult position and very a lot of small businesses and, and people rely on the sector you know, well, listen, like everyone else, uh, Julia, last year, it was a staycation in the back garden. And, as, you know, as, as we, we took that on board because we had no choice. But I'm not sure if I could face another summer stuck at home mowing the lawn. It's not really me. Well, especially when we had a mixture of snowflakes and um, rain and um, and sunshine yesterday. And, and, and you know, it, it's yes, not only about the, about the weather, clearly, but, but many people have been separated across the world. You know, there are desperate families that are, are, that are desperate to be reunited. And it's very easy to forget that. I think one out of seven individuals in the UK are not born in the UK. So, you know, there's a there's a, you know, a, a population of, of, of the, the of Brits that really want to be overseas for, for not only just for family and friends and leisure, but also for businesses. Businesses are really reliant on on travel. I keep reminding my, my boys who um, who love football that international championship games can't happen without international travel. So there are lots of businesses that are relying on the sector. Um, so it really is not just for the privileged. It's not to be disregarded. Um, and the industry, say, is, is ready and eager to, to welcome passengers as and when the government allows us to do so. Julia, thank you for joining us this afternoon. Julia Lebois, Chief Executive of the Advantage Travel Partnership. Julia, can I ask you, did your dad have a restaurant in Finchley? Do you know? Yes. And I I actually think, I've just tweeted you, because I actually think we went to the same school. No, How we, strange is no, that? No, we didn't, we didn't go to school, but I knew, I knew your parents really well. It was a great restaurant. On oh, Finchley wow. Yeah, what yeah. a small world. How fantastic. Yeah, they retired about 20 years ago. And yeah, and I had um, got some great memories of it. <laughs> Thank you, Julia. Wish you well. Julia Lebois, Chief Executive of the Advantage Travel Partnership. So we'll